Hello, today we'll be covering changes to the editor since the first tutorial video, starting with the menus in the upper left. In the editor settings you can now change the editor background between the default bright sky background, a darker background, and a hangar environment. There is also an optional autosave feature which will automatically save your aircraft at the interval you set. Keep in mind that this can cause the game to briefly freeze if you have made any significant changes since the last save, especially if said changes involve decal placement. The gray gear icon now leads to three different tools, the first of which is used to create custom inputs. I will partially cover this later in the video, and cover it fully in a separate tutorial. The second tool is a radar cross-section area calculator. This is used to calculate the RCS of your aircraft from all six sides. The units can be changed between square meters and decibels per square meter. Higher values indicate that an aircraft appears larger to a radar pointing at it from the respective direction. As for the overall stealth rating, a higher value indicates a stealthier aircraft, but it is more important to focus on the individual side components, especially the front and sides. The third tool is a description that you can save for each individual aircraft. This can be especially useful for writing down keybinds for custom inputs or any particular flight instructions that an aircraft may require. The small white square is supposed to be the save button, so be sure to click it after making any changes. One aspect of the ruler tool that I forgot to mention in my first tutorial video is that you can click anywhere on the aircraft with your middle mouse button to automatically place one of the ruler ends at that position. Returning to the gray gear menu, we have the custom input tool. This allows you to create control inputs that are not part of the stock controls. You can select the type of output the control will have, its range, default value, gravity, which is the speed at which it returns to the default value, and input sensitivity. You can also set keybinds at the bottom. You can now toggle the center of mass centroid on and off by clicking the yellow and black circle at the lower right of the screen. Additionally, there is a center of pressure centroid to help you balance your aircraft. Do note that the position of this centroid is only calculated based on the mean aerodynamic center of the horizontal wing sections and does not take fuselage lift into account. If you have a relatively flat fuselage with decent lifting properties, your actual center of pressure is farther forward than the centroid will depict. A decent rule of thumb for designing a stable aircraft is to keep the center of pressure around one to one half of the fuselage diameter behind the center of mass. Next we have these green attachment nodes, which can be toggled with the white circle button on the lower right. The attachment nodes allow you to snap parts together by moving a node on the part you are holding near a node that you want to attach it to. This method of attaching parts isn't necessary, but it can be convenient. If you're using a default cockpit and hold shift while placing a fuselage part on the attachment node, it will automatically conform the fuselage's shape to that of the cockpit. Next, we'll look at the changes made to the cross-section editor. First, we can now press tab with the fuselage part selected to open it. You can now save your own fuselage cross-sections and load them from the drop-down on the upper left. Note that cross-sections will only be saved for one specific fuselage type, so you cannot save a 32 vertex cross-section for a 16 vertex fuselage piece, for example. Next, we can now type in the X and Y coordinates for the selected vertex in the CSC. This also works for groups of vertices, which can be useful for making straight vertical or horizontal lines. The straighten tool now spaces the selected vertices equally along the edge it creates. The cross-section editor has a new mode to allow you to move vertices in 3D space. To enter this mode, click the vertex button at the bottom center of the screen with the CSE open.
can still select multiple points by shift left clicking or clicking and dragging. This replaces the old vertex slide buttons as well. As usual, be sure to hold shift when moving multiple points. For fuselage parts, you now have the option to customize up to three different materials that you can use with the cross-section editor's material assignment tool. Additionally, there are many new material types to choose from. These materials are also available for parts other than fuselages. At the time of making this video, these materials are cosmetic only. You can also change the detail tiling of each individual material. The paint tool now has the option to paint text by changing the mode to text. When you enter your text, be sure to press enter so that you don't accidentally input anything while pressing other keys. You can also change the font just below the text entry field. One thing to note about painting and materials is that you can only paint on the first material in a parts material list. There are now two new fuselage pieces, the 64 vertex fuselage and the 16 vertex fuselage. The 64 vertex fuselage is great for making very smooth and complex surfaces, while the 16 vertex fuselage is better suited for making small parts such as cockpit instruments. The 32 vertex fuselage is still a good choice for making reasonably detailed builds if you don't want to spend a lot of time moving vertices around. Remember that you cannot load a saved cross section for fuselage pieces with different vertex counts. If you try to use the clipboard and blend tool to get around this, the CSE will fail to properly interpolate the vertex positions. Jimmy now has some options to make his appearance better suited for different aircraft types. Scrolling all the way to the end of the options, there is a toggle for the side panels. There is also an offset option so that you can build aircraft with side-by-side -side seating more easily. This will only move Jimmy's part model and camera view, but the aircraft will still be centered at 0xyz in the editor. There are also drop downs to choose the seat type and headgear type Jimmy will have, but the seat type is limited to the ejector seat for now. On many configurable parts, there has been a new input system implemented. This allows you to change how the part responds to any input you choose, including custom inputs you create in the custom input menu mentioned earlier. You can also have the part respond to multiple inputs simultaneously. On control surfaces, there are some prefab options to set the part's responses based on the type of control surface you want. Be sure to click Set Mirror if you have a symmetrical part. To add a response, select one from the drop-down in the Responses panel. In flight, the number you enter in each response field will be multiplied by the respective input you have selected. To see how the value of each input changes in flight, press F4 to bring up the entire list of them. Finally, there are some new icons that show up underneath the part names in the part selection window. These each indicate a function that the part has that are not available in parts without them. The flame icon indicates that a part can store fuel. The CSE icon indicates that the cross-section editor is available on a part. The paintbrush indicates that a part can be painted with the paint tool. The gear icon indicates that it is able to be linked to an engine or gearbox.